everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup. This is season two, episode 34, Dangerous Engagements. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video. Give me a thumbs up, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode last night <laughs> was a hot ass mess. I think we can pretty much all agree that every female on this episode is crazy as hell. I don't want to spend too much time on this intro. I got a little bottle of water today because it's Saturday. It's a beautiful day in Austin, Texas, and I'm going to get out and enjoy some of this, okay? So your auntie will be drinking later. So I got my water now to be prepared. So hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So first off, we're going to start with Cheryl and Josh. Now, they had a daytime dinner day because you already know he got an 8 o'clock curfew. He got that ankle bracelet on. He got to have his ass back at his mama house by 8 o'clock. Now, Cheryl is irritated because she like, who eats dinner during the daytime, bitch me? <laughs> Bitch, if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat it when I dog going to want it. So she pissed off that they got to go to dinner during the daytime. She looking irritated. Is it just me? Does she seem like she irritated all the damn time? She always look like she pissed off. It's like, damn, girl. <laughs> bitch, you got some dick. Your man is home. Smile, ho. Have a Coke, a Snickers, and a smile. Because, bitch, you just ain't yourself when you're hungry. I think that's what's wrong with her ass. The bitch is home so goddamn little. But... He's excited. He's like a big ass kid. You know, he's telling her that the restaurant, the crazy thing about it, that it used to be an old prison. This nigga mine still stuck in a pen, still stuck in a doggone pen. Now, she's saying that now that he's out, she wants a proper proposal from him. Now, look here. First of all, you already know he got 84000 He got to pay in restitution fees, mama. He's not going to be able to afford no doggone ring like you want. Now, you know the ring she got on. She went and picked that ring out. He said that the reason why she wants a proper proposal because the way he sort of proposed to her, he told her to go out and buy the ring so that way these other dudes out here will know that you're taken and they won't try to come for you. That was basically his proposal. So she like, no, look here, we're going to have to do something a, lot, a whole lot goddamn better than that, especially you think you, uh, now that you out and... You know what I'm saying, nigga? I got to deal with you and your crazy ass mama and all of this. But basically, she said she want a proper ass proposal. Josh, like, I'm going to give it to you, but I'm going to give it to you on my terms. You know, you just going to have to chill. I want it to be a surprise. You ain't going to expect it. You know, that's the way I want it to be. And I'm just still saying that like that, bitch. He just got out of prison. Let the nigga breathe. So y'all, later on, they driving, and she's like, where are we going? He said they going to a ring shop. This turns out to be the pawn shop. I ain't mad at him. I ain't judging him because the pawn shop got some fly shit up in there. I done got a couple of pieces from the pawn shop my dog on sale. But anyways, they get there. Her thing is like they looking at different rings. She's picking out some stuff that she thinks that she likes. You know, she's calling this cute, that's cute. Everything that she's picking out, he's saying it's ugly as hell, right? Now, they see one ring that she does want. It's $5,000. He's like, okay, we're going to have to pump her brakes, hold off on that a little bit right now because, of course, the nigga ain't got no dog on money. Then she starts looking all sad in the face she's like what did you expect girl this nigga didn't have no money but as he's telling her you know we're gonna have to save up our money we're gonna come back we're gonna get the green whoop de woo they leaving now he sees some speakers that he want he's like oh babe but uh this is more my style right here um can i get them please babe and she's like uh hell no like nigga you ain't got no money for the ring, but you want me to buy you some doggone speakers. She's telling the cameraman or whatever that basically she's tired of hearing about all the money he wants and all the things that he wants. She feels like he's putting his material materialistic needs before her. What I think it is, now that he's out, she wants to be all about her. She wants him to be fully committed to her, give her this life. We in the hood. You know how it go. I hope they catch that nigga, whoever he is. But now she wants to be all about her. She wants him to just be focused and committed on her. She wants this life that she wanted with kids and barns and steers and cows and horses and all that doggone wear. He's still childish in the mind. Now, mind you, he was locked up for six years. So, of course, when he get out, he only been out a couple of days. His mind is still stuck in a pen, which was stuck on robbing folks before then. So, you thinking now that you done stuck with him for two years that he was locked up, he finna get out and everything finna be all about you. No, ma'am, it's not. And she's basically like, I don't know if you want me and I can't tell. He's like, baby, if I don't want you, I don't want to be here. No, baby, he wants you. He just can't give you what it is that you want from him. That's the problem. He just got out. You had these ghetto dreams thinking everything going to pop off once he got out of prison. No, no, boo-boo, wee-wee. Mm -mm. You got a word for that. Next up, 
y'all? We got Amber and Vince. Now, y'all, this right here was the doggone trip. So, they in the car riding the puppy's mama house, Kathy, <laughs> a.k.a. Amber's mother-in-law. Now, as they riding over there to the house, Vincent is saying, he's basically bringing up the conversation that they were having last night, where she was basically accusing him of trying to con her. Now, he was like, right before you was getting ready to get out, shit was good, everything was going good with us, and now all of a sudden, now that you out, now you got all these people in your ear telling you that I'm conning you, like, where's all this coming from? She getting irritated, basically, she's saying she just needs to talk with Kathy because she feels like she needs to get, you know, some other opinions again, like you ain't got enough. Basically, you don't need no opinions. You won't be with that man. You need to go ahead and tell him that, okay? So, they get to Kathy's house. As soon as they get to Kathy's house, she thinking he's gonna be like, alright, bye, see you later. Girl, no, he follows her in the house, in the room. She like, God damn, I can't shake this motherfucker. Uh, Kathy, you wanna go outside and smoke a cigarette? Kathy's like, okay, girl, let's go. They go outside and smoke a cigarette. Cigarette. He comes out there after them. It's like, well, I know I don't smoke, but uh, you mind if I sit out here with you guys? She like, damn, nigga, yes, uh, sit down. So he's sitting down with them. They out there smoking a cigarette, and basically Amber's like, you know, I think we just need to like. We really need to figure some things out because everything is awkward between us. Still, like, she ain't been saying it since the moment she got out. Kathy is like, you know, I just really want to know what's going on with y'all and if y'all need to take some time to just be away from each other. Because, like, when me and Puppy's dad were together, we were together, like, even five years into the relationship, everybody was like, dang, did y'all just get together? Because we were so affectionate and so loving. It's clear that you all aren't affectionate. Like, what's really going on with y'all? I think y'all even need to figure out what's going on with y'all. Split up. Try to work it out. Whatever it is that you need to do. I done said my piece. In the meantime, in between time, I'm going to sit out here and let y'all talk. I'm going to go ahead and go in the house. Get a pot of neck bones going on the plate or something like that. I don't know that what she said, girl, but she got up and she left, right? So after she got up and she left, Amber and Vince are still out there talking. And Amber's like, yeah, you know, I think she's right. I think we just really need to, like, slow down just figure some things out. Now, at the same time... Kathy is talking to the production or whatever right now. She's telling production, I think Amber just needs to keep it real with Vincent. I think she's got other people on her mind and on her heart that she still hasn't dealt with yet. Production is like, who, you mean puppy? She's like, yep, I mean puppy. Basically, she's still in love with Puppy. Now, Amber tells production as well that she's got something that she's been hiding from Vince. Now, she does say that her first kiss with Vince since she's got out, it's the first time that she has kissed a man in four years. Child, how about before that? We all knew that you were still feeling puppy. We all knew that you and puppy was still click clacking and all that together. We all know why you sitting up here saying he conning you, you conning him. Y'all is conning each other. The jig is up with the all of y'all. So y'all, we gonna see what's I'm telling y'all, I'm ready for puppy to get her ass out of jail. Cause once puppy get out of jail, oh, this gonna be gone for show show. <laughs> He gonna be gone for show show whether he wants to or not cause puppy coming to claim that puss whether he know it or not. Lizzie and Daniel. Now, so Daniel been out of prison for four weeks now. He's in the house playing video games. Lizzie pulls up. She got all these damn groceries. She done had to honk the horn about three, four damn times because he up in there. Sound like he was playing Mario Brothers. It wasn't no 2019 shit he was playing. I don't know what that was. Whether it was Papa, uh, uh, Duck Hunt, or something he was playing. He was playing some old school. Them was my doggone games. You can tell your auntie old school. <laughs> Them all the kind of goddamn games I know. That and uh, what, Sonic the Hedgehog? Shit, I don't know what the hell he was playing. I, I don't know what the hell he was playing. Anyways, he finally came outside, helped her to get the groceries, whatever, right? Now, as soon as she, she get in the house, She's asking him, okay, what you done all day? Like, you been out four weeks. You still ain't went and look for no doggone job. You said she was going to get your GED. You still ain't got your GED. Like, what are you doing? Now, hold on. Time out. Take a pause for the cause. He was locked up for three years. They got GED programs in prison, don't they? Why you ain't get your GED when you was in prison? You ain't had shit else to do when you was in jail. You could have got two, three, four degrees in that doggone time. But you still been out four weeks and ain't got no damn GED at least. Girl, no ma'am. No ma'am. So he's helping her put away groceries. Chai, as he's helping her put away the groceries, he sees a pregnancy test in the bag. He's like, okay, now hold on. What the hell is this? And she was like, well, what you think it is? People take that when they need to see if they're pregnant or not, right? He's like, oh, hold on now. Like, uh, I'm going to need you to go do this shit right now. I don't think we're ready for all of this. Now, she goes to take the test. Now, part of her is happy thinking that she might be pregnant. Mind you, she was just fussing at this motherfucker about being at home playing video games all day and still ain't got out and did nothing with itself, right? Now, mind you, he say he want to be a mechanic, but you ain't went and talked to now another mechanic, asked to intern at the auto zone, 
O'Reilly's or nothing. You ain't went out and did a damn thing. You was just fussing at him because of that, right? She goes in there in the bathroom, takes a pregnancy test. Thank God, honey. Y'all, I'm sorry. I, my sister called me right in the middle as I was getting it good into my review. And you better have watched this, sister, too, since she done called me and interrupted me in the middle of my video. Anyways, like I was saying, thank God she came back and she was not pregnant, right? So afterwards, he's even like, he's happy that she's not pregnant. So he's like, who? thank you, because uh, right now ain't the time. We don't need to be worried about that. Next thing you know, she flipping. She like, wait a minute. You were saying that you wanted to get pregnant, you wanted to get married within six months of us, of you getting out of jail. Now all of a sudden, we got a pregnancy scare and now you like, okay, I don't wanna do this, we need to wait, we need to hold on. Like, where the hell is that coming from? Lizzie, y'all ain't got shit, baby. You don't need to be worrying about trying to have no baby, baby. You, first of all, you didn't have no time to visit him when he was locked up, okay? Now you, he's out. You got all the time in the world to kick it with him, but now you want to have a baby with him, but you ain't had no time to do number four. Mind you, you still got secrets that this boy don't know about. No, I'm, I'm thankful Daniel you had a little bit of sense about himself and he wasn't upset that she wasn't pregnant. Like he said, I do want to marry you. I want to have a family with you eventually. But right now, <laughs> today just ain't the day. Glorietta and Alex. Cha, if this next scenario right here wasn't a hot ass damn mess. So they on their way to the engagement dinner, right? All of his family is there, all of her family is there. It's the first time the families are mingling, coexisting with each other, right? Now, Glorietta still hasn't told her mom that she's agreed for the kids to be Muslim if they do have kids, right? Now, mind you, mama up in engagement me mugging everybody. Baby, she came with that bomber jacket on, had her hair back. She was ready for woe. She was ready to act up and get snatched up. She came in there on 10, TTG, ready to go, right? So as soon as they walk in, Alex is introducing Glorietta to all his family. Pause. Now, he introduced her to one of his homeboys. I had to rewind this. I ain't gonna lie about five, six, seven, eight times. Alex said, what's up, my nigga, to that boy? Yeah, he did. If it, if it was his homeboy that said, what's up, my nigga, please let me know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if you saw what I seen and you was reading the lips like I was reading the lips, Alex said, what's up, my nigga? I'm going to leave that alone on that. So he's introducing her to family and friends. Everybody is welcoming her. They're like, hey, how you doing? Hugging her, whoop de whoop When it came time to her to introduce him to her family, he had to tell her, like, why don't you introduce me to your people? She's like, okay, this is my fiance, Alex. This is my homegirl. This is my homegirl mama. This is my brother. Of course, you know my mom. He barely reaches out to, like, Barely touches her elbow to say hello to you. She's like, oh, don't touch me, man. Don't touch me. I ain't with the sh I'm with the shits, but I ain't with the shits today. Like, don't touch me. She started going left real damn quick. Baby, when I tell you afterwards, I'm glad Glorietta checked her mama because she was like, mom, look here. If you finna come up in here, you finna act a damn fool, you need to go ahead and tell your ass home. That ain't what we doing today. We on some love and happiness type shit. You trying to be out here on, on your pock shit, you can go ahead and ride out, get the hell on up out of there. So mama was like, okay, I'm gonna agree with it too. I don't wanna be here with it no, no damn damn way. So go ahead and give me a hug. So she gave her a hug and she was leaving. Alex saw that she was leaving. So Alex's homeboy like told him, you know, like, hey, go speak to her, whatever. He goes outside, try to talk to mama, barely touches her one more time, just to kind of show her for like, you know, hey, let's go over here and talk. It was not being disrespectful he wasn't being rude with it in no kind of way the mama just is fucked up in the head he's trying to tell her look I sat up and I was because this is how he started it off he was like you know I just want to tell you what happened like last night I got up at three o'clock this morning and, and I had to make a phone call I wanted to have a conversation with you he's trying to tell the wild bitch that he can he spoke with whoever the whoever it is he needs spoke to that 
He and Gloria can get married without even one of them having to convert. That's what he wanted to tell the mama. But the mama was so stuck up in her own bullshit. As soon as he said something about in Islam, she automatically thought that he was trying to convert her. Then she started going off. Listen, I respect your religion. I don't want to hear nothing about that. You ain't this to me. You ain't that to me. Stick it up your ass. Like she was acting real, real, real. Whew, I'm trying not to curse so much because you know what I'm saying I want to get as many ads in this video as I can, but she was acting dumb as hell Dumb as hell finally they basically had to haul her ass on up out of there brother went and told Glorietta like look here Mama's outside arguing with Alex you finna have to go shut this shit down So she goes out there trying to stop everything y'all the mama calls the whole damn scene basically shut the whole damn party down because afterwards when nobody left up in there Glorietta and Alex it's just them with the little cake, so they cut a little piece of cake, share a little moment. I feel so bad for them. But then, child, afterwards, Alex is seeing in his green screen the thought of Russian marriage is making him nervous. Now, mind you, he still got Angelina that's waiting in the wing that he's still trying to go see his ex. Mm hmm. Y'all. <laughs> Lacey and Shane, baby, when I tell you this is this has got to be one of my favorite little thruples on here. If you thought Mike, Megan, and Sarah was a damn trip, baby, this shit right here. Okay, so look, Shane done got him some of that good, that good Lacey puss. She done put it on him. This fool done went to a hot dog on jewelry shop. He looking for a ring now. He ready to put that ring on that thing. He said John is getting out tomorrow. So in his mind, he wants to go and propose to Lacey, thinking that if I propose to her, I can lock her ass down. Ain't gonna be no more John, right? He walk up into the jewelry shop. That man look like he tans seven days a week, eight hours a day. Baby, I take that back. Eight days a week, seven hours a day. He looks very tan. He was just like this, like, hi, you ready to make a sale? Because I'm damn sure ready to sell some shit to you. Soon as he walks in, he looked like, okay, y'all got cameras, lights. Let me let me fix my shit. Okay, I'm going to make some money about this bitch. So he was like, okay, so what kind of ring you looking for? What's your budget? What you looking to do? He was like, um, I'm probably going to have to make a payment plan. And I ain't, you know, I want to keep a nice sale, probably about $500. And I was like, uh. Okay. All right. Shit, I thought you was going to be doing something. Okay, well, let me show you what I got. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So he showed him the little rings or whatever. He finds a ring that he thinks Lacey's going to like. Later on, bitch. Later on, bitch. Him and Lacey go and they have drinks and dinner or whatever, right? Lacey comes in with her tig old bitties just a bounce and about to pop on up out her dress. They sit down and they talk. Now, she eventually does tell him that John is getting out tomorrow and he is getting paroled to her house. He gets pissed. He was like, oh, bitch, hold on. Once again, like I say, every time he get with Lacey, he find out a new piece of information about her ass and she been hiding from him every damn time, right? So he gets pissed after that. He like, look here, basically, you don't have to choose between me and him. Like, what's it going to be? She's like, no. He's like, let me on. Like, right now? I have to choose right now? He's like, hell yeah, bitch, right now. You have to let me know something. Child, next thing you know, this dumb motherfucker get on his knee and proposes to her. She said, huh? She tells him, yes. But bitch, you still got a whole fiance in the prison about to get released in less than 24 hours girl i was about done with fucking lacy i'm like this bitch is out of her mind she's really damn crazy girl so she tells him yes they in there taking pictures got the waitress taking pictures all of that later on he's like okay let's go outside and smoke a cigarette she's like okay cool i'll be out there in a minute child he goes outside then she calls her homegirl, Michelle, to tell Michelle, Shane just proposed to me and I don't know what to do. I'm so confused. Homegirl, like, bitch, you don't have to work it out. <laughs> and I'm laid up here with my man. I ain't got time for this shit. Like, you don't have to work it out. You knew what you was doing. You knew you was fucking two niggas in the prison. So, like, what it is? What you want me to do? You messed up. You're in the predicament. What you want me to do about it? Basically, that's what homegirl was saying. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> the fuck? So, child... She seems like she's drunk because the way she was drunk crying with no tears in her eyes, girl. She's like, oh my God, and when John proposed to me, it was so sweet and it was so special. And she did it. It was just like nothing. Like, I didn't know. I was like, 
bitch if you don't shut your dingy ass up. Finally, she goes outside with Shane, sitting down on the step with him. She takes the ring off and tells him, I'm sorry, I can't accept this ring. I'm going to have to see what's going on with me and John. Please don't hate me. Please don't leave me. He gets pissed and he like, what the fuck you mean? Like, he's mad, understandably. Next thing you know, baby, it went from sugar to shit to sugar to shit shit. She starts going off on him. I'm mad at you. This proposal didn't mean anything. I'm sick at you. You're absolutely alone. She goes to the bathroom crying. Baby, she came out like a true drunk bitch. She swung that door open. I'm like, where's that motherfucker at? Went outside looking for his ass. Walking out in the damn parking lot. You're fucking missing me. Oh! She was the classic baby. Here in Austin, we got something called Sixth Street. And I know they got that in every neighborhood somewhere in every city and every state. That one college street that everybody goes to to get drunk. And it's that one white girl down there that's drunker than every frat boy combined down there. She cussing everybody out. She drunk. She ready to fight. That was Lacey's ass, baby. She goes getting ready to get in the car and leave. Shane has to go and tell her, no, you can't drive. You messed up right now. Bitch starts swinging on him, hitting him with the phone. He's like, oh, this bitch is crazy. I didn't know she was that kind of crazy. He goes around to the other side of the car, tells her, look here, bitch, me and you, we done. Finito. Your crazy ass can chunk four deuces. I'm done with you. She gets pissed off because he says that, then goes behind, chases behind him, smacks his ass in the face. He was like, you know what? I'm done. Get me out of here. I know he was thinking, I just got out of prison. I can't choke this home camera. Somebody take me somewhere before I end up back in the prison. Y'all, he still says in the end that he loves her and he will be with her as long as John is not in the picture. After you seen the folk kind of crazy that this bitch can get, now, she does say that she has to see what's going on with her and John because her and John been in each other's lives for 15 years. You've been with him 15 years, but you got three kids and ain't now none of them one of them his. You think the middle one might be his? Girl, bye, dismiss me with that bullshit. But the episode ended from there, y'all. Now, on this next episode, when John gets out, this dumbass fool Shane shows up at the release. Like, you ready to either get your head knocked off your body or get your ass back arrested. Child, either way it go, I will be here for it, and I will have the review for you, and I will have the review on time for you, okay? Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I, Timo, will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.